I know, I know, obviously, I don't think that many 5 year olds will be watching this video. The title of this video is from a meme from the Office TV show. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm 5? But in a nutshell, in this video, I will share a method that I've been using for years to explain Agile to anyone in the simplest way possible. Your colleagues who know nothing about software development, your spouse, your kids, your grandparents, anyone, you will be able to explain Agile in simple terms to anyone. But first, we need to talk about something important. I added Agile methodology in the title of this video because YouTube, when writing the title, YouTube suggested that I add that in the title. There seems to be a general consensus on YouTube that Agile is a methodology. People search for it. It's in the title of many videos, but it's not. I would describe it as a set of principles, a mindset, a philosophy for software development focused on flexibility, customer satisfaction, and collaboration. It's a document the Agile Manifesto created in 2001. Yeah. That's a long time ago. The document contains 12 principles, 4 values. But the key thing that really stands out with Agile is its iterative and incremental approach to software development instead of a linear process, which was very popular 20 years ago. Now, how do you explain that Agile software development to someone who knows nothing about software development? A 5-year-old kid? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you are at the beach with a shovel, a big bucket, and a dream to build a huge castle. Obviously, you're not alone. You have two friends which will help you together. We will build this castle together. Here's how agile software development can help you do that more effectively. Number one, start with a plan and keep it simple. You need to start somewhere. You can't just start building the castle. <laughs> Chaos if you do that. No, start with a plan. At least you need to have an idea of what you want to build. What will it look like? Talk with your friends. What do we want to build together? What does the final castle look like? Come up with ideas and then you decide together. Okay, we will do that. That's the design that will create. I'll build this tower here. There will be a gate here. You don't need to talk for hours to do that. Only five minutes. Quickly build a quick plan, a quick design and start building the castle. In Agile, we don't document the requirements for three months. <laughs> no, we start with some simple requirements some simple designs, a simple plan, and we start working because we know it doesn't need to be perfect because we will change it in the future. Obviously, we'll change it with feedback from our customers, our stakeholders, or other people watching your castle, <laughs> your parents, your spouse, who will give you feedback. You will change things in your castle. So a plan, the design doesn't need to be perfect right now. You just need to have a basic, simple plan and start. Number two, build a little bit at a time. The first thing you need to do once you have your plan, your simple plan, and your simple design is start working. <laughs> Take your shovel, your big bucket, and start building the castle. But don't build everything in one go. That shouldn't be your mindset, and that shouldn't be what you do. Only a few parts. Maybe you can start with a foundation, the base. Make sure that it's strong. And once you've finished the base, ask for feedback from your spouse, <laughs> other friends, your parents. How does it look like? Does the base look strong? Maybe test it. That's what Agile is all about. We don't build the software in one go throughout many months or years <laughs> and then give it to a customer one year later. No, 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 no. We don't work on requirements for three months, build for one year and then give it to customer. That's not Agile. That's wonderful. 20 years ago, very popular. But now we build in iterations. Simple plan, simple design, simple requirements. We build it for two weeks. Maybe you're working in a sprint of two weeks, an iteration of two weeks, and then we show it to the customer. That's what we build. What do you think? Do you want to change something? What would you do differently? What should we add? What should we remove? Maybe the foundation of a castle is not good. Feedback, extremely important. Once the foundation, the base is good, or if it was not good, you got feedback, 
you start changing it and you ask for feedback again at some point it will be good everyone will be happy with a base with a foundation you move on to the next step you build the tower you build the gate you build some sections in the castle but all in increments iterative approach once you build this beautiful tower you ask your stakeholders your spouse your parents what do you think about this castle what do you think about this tower does it look good yeah it looks good you can keep on going ah that's good that's good feedback that's what agile is all about just imagine you were working building your beautiful castle the whole day at the beach with your two friends you're working on this castle in complete isolation 100 meters from your parents <laughs> no one has seen the castle except from you. You believe the castle is beautiful and you're building this castle for your parents. You believe that this castle will be the most beautiful thing that your parents have seen. Four hours later, you're done with the castle. Excited, you go fetch your parents. Come see, come see the castle. And they look at it. It looks bad. <laughs> it's horrible. They don't like it. You just wasted four hours in agile iterative approach incremental approach we build a little bit here as for feedback improve it a little bit here as for feedback improve it always feedback from our stakeholders from our customers same thing for software development number four teamwork is key there's two things that make agile teams stand out first cross functionality and second self-management the team is self-managed no one is telling the team what to do no one is telling you how to build the castle you have full control on what to build how to build it who is building it who is building the tower the gate and by when you complete the castle full control not your parents not your spouse no one is telling you what to do and second cross functionality everyone has different skills maybe john your friend is known to build the perfect tower you are a digger <laughs> you just dig you dig you're perfect at this job everyone has a role in the team everyone excels at something but the whole team is cross-functional simply meaning that together we will be able to build this beautiful castle we have all the skills, all the knowledge in order to meet this design, this plan that we agreed on at the beginning, that we said we would do. Cross-functional team. Number five, be flexible. Remember, you had a plan, a design, but people came with feedback. <laughs> people walking around on the beach are telling you, ah, I don't think this tower looks good. You're collecting feedback and you're changing your plan. You're changing the design. Each and everything that you do is based on the feedback that you got. You're using all the data to make good decisions. Decisions with regard to designs, decisions with regard to plans, decisions with regard to how you do things. 20 years ago, when building software, you gave me a requirement. I'm a developer. You give me the requirement. The requirement needs to be clear. We sign a contract, nothing changes. I don't care if you think that something needs to change after. Nope. If you want to change something, you pay me more. That's a change request. I'm not here to satisfy your needs. I'm here to satisfy the contract. We don't do that in Agile. Yes, we build contracts also. Obviously, when working with third-party providers, we need a contract. But what's important here is to be flexible, is to satisfy the customer. Number six, why not do some regular check-ins why not do a retrospective maybe during lunch take a break for lunch go grab a snack with your friends go swim and while you do all these activities talk about the castle up to now what has been great with the way we've been building this castle have we been talking enough has john been collecting sand as efficiently as possible what do you think about our plan the tide is rising won't the water submerge our castle we can talk about all these things in the retrospective that's what we do in agility also each and every single iteration or sprint we do a retrospective we talked about what went well in the iteration or sprint what could be improved in future sprints what can we do differently all about our tools communications processes how we work together how can we improve that with a goal of being more effective and once your retrospective is done once your lunch is done you take all the learnings that you agreed on and you start doing these learnings when building your castle when continuing to build your castle and it never stops that's the beauty with agility the customer always wants something new so you will never end the construction of your castle <laughs> the final version of your castle before you go home 
That's the final version of today. You went home, but this version could always be improved. Same as software, continuous improvement, continuous learning, and we should be having fun together. <laughs> That's the most important step, having fun together, being happy, motivated, driven by what we do in order to satisfy the customer. That's how you explain agility in simple terms to anyone. If you want more tips, insights on Agile Scrum personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.